are making another tuffet. And I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this color wise. Now the whole basis of this project that I'm working on is built around these two colors. Okay, that's that's the project. I haven't really gone in depth about it, but you'll start to see it come together as we progress. If you have been following along, um, then you've seen me use these colors. Okay, but I don't want too much happening here. So I think I'm going to, I think this still coordinates well. Um, I shouldn't say the whole project. It's those colors in this print. So this entire project is about those colors in this print. I don't want to put this print on the round tuffet too. It's already on the square one. I think that's a bit much. So I think it's going to be this. I'm not going to add piping to this one. Piping is hard. <laughs> that's, that's the whole reason why we're not. Because you know what? It's hard. It's not the easiest thing to do. And I would like to move swiftly through this. <clears throat> so this foundation is from Tuffet Source. And instead of it being a fusible on that super duper lightweight, we are on good old cotton. This is true fabric. I am going to press it like the Dickens, and I think I'm going to do the method that nobody ever talks about, which is the 4-1-2-1. So if you see Tuffets, and they've got a larger, like a larger um, section, I think it's because they're doing the 4-1-2-1 method. So I'm going to use this focal fabric to cover up four of these sections. Then I'm going to do one. Then I'm going to do one that covers up two sections. Then I'm going to do another one. I know that probably sounds silly, but this is really just foundation pieced. It's kind of the same thing as we've been doing with paper, except for we're doing it with fabric. And yeah, I think that's the, I think that's what we're going to do. This is going to be the one. This is going to be the two because I really want you to be able to see this suit. And it's. And it's all about this um, flower here. This tuff it will be about floral flowers, roses, which is going to be part of the floral kind of feel. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is the same thing that I did with the other one is I'm going to cut everything out. This one has nice bold lines for you to see. And I think I will use my ruler, this little guy here, and a rotary cutter to do this rather quickly. I think that's going to be safe on this one. And be sure that you are not going all the way in. You're just staying the line. <clears throat> just be sure to stay the line on this one. And it also gives you a button cover pattern too, which is very nice of them. So I'm just going to cut these all apart and then we'll be back. There should be eight of these. So in this fabric, I've just cut everything out and I have hit it with a ton of starch. Well, it's quilting magic. And it has a key right here, and it talks about the solid line is a cutting line. This broken line here is a center stitch line. You have a placement line. You have your strip stitching line. You have your panel stitching line, and you have your pin alignment point. I guess I'll just cut this out for funsies. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but yeah. I probably need to change this blade. This blade has been through quite a few projects and it is still actually hanging in there so I'll tell you guys which blade this is because this blade has done paper piecing and everything and I still haven't changed it out and I think that's worth noting okay let's press out all these pieces and then I'm going to show you I'm going to cut the fabric for it so all these are cut out I left the bottom part on and I just wanted to go through these lines with you one more time this black line was the cutting line we cut these all apart using that line this is the center stitching line. This is the placement line. We're foundation piecing, and so you want to be sure that you get at least a quarter of an inch over this line before you um, before you start stitching so that when you fold it back, we've got some little play here. We've got a seam allowance to work with. Then these are the strip stitching lines here. And then we have the panel stitching line. So when you join your panels together, you'll be using the brown. And then we have the pin alignment so that we get these bad boys all where they're supposed to be. And this is all using this key here. Again, I didn't cut off the bottom. I'll clean that off when I get ready. And now I'm getting ready to do a little measuring because I'm going to do the four, one, two, one method. 
So the four will always be on this side. And then we'll do, so these four, one, two, three, four, that's five. Okay, that's wrong. One, two, three, four will all be covered. The center line right here is where I need to make sure that that fabric goes all the way from outside this edge to right here. The fabric has to cover that. And so in order for me to get a good, I can cut these strips at five pieces, so five inches. So five inches should give me enough play to place it here, stitch it here, still have a little area to cut it off, and still go all the way past the edge. So I'm gonna cut that one at five inches. The next one I'm gonna cut at probably one and a half. I should be writing this down. So I'm gonna cut the first big strip at five inches. I'm gonna cut the second one at one and a half inches. They measure just a little short of one inch. So one and a half should give me enough play on either side. And then to cover these two, we're gonna cut that one at, I'd say two and a half inches, and we should be fine. So I'm gonna need eight strips for the five, because each one of these panels, there's eight panels, is gonna get one strip. So I'm gonna need eight of those. Then we're gonna need eight of the two and a half. And then we're going to need 16 one and a half inch strips. Let's do it. So glad that I pulled this back because who would have known that this was happening back here? What is this? When did I cut that out? What did I use that for? I am embarrassed because I almost I was almost about to power cut and that was going to be just not great. So I was only going to cut this a few times, fold it over. And now I think I'm going to cut from this side. I'm going to leave that side to be, I don't know. You guys, I think I'm going to have to buy more of this fabric because I don't think that these projects are enough to say, okay, I feel like I'm done with it. I think there's still some things in me when it comes to this fabric. Not 100% sure, but it feels like it. So I'm going to freshen up this edge. I'm not going to fussy cut these flowers because I don't want to attempt to have them lay directly in the center. I just want it to be kind of let it organically fall. Two reasons. One, it takes more time. Two, it will um, eat into my fabric. I'll have to use way more fabric to get everything aligned perfectly. But I can see here that I'm going to get... Actually, I'm not going to get as much as I really want. Jeez. Oh, Five inch strips for this and I'm gonna get two five inch strips out of every cut so I'm gonna have to do this four times I like where this back strip is gonna lay um, I'll probably cut into about this much we'll see we're just gonna let go and let God and just move on okay it's happening I'm, I'm committing to it it's, I really don't want to cut into a whole bunch of this fabric. I might need some more of it for some upcoming projects. Two, and then we're going to just cut two more, and then we'll have our eight strips. You want all your strips to be at least 20 inches, so I'm just cutting off the back ends of these pieces. And I'm going to hit it with an iron. It doesn't matter. This is not an exact process. So I'm going to hit these with an iron and then we're going to cut the next color. So I've cut out all my little shapes the best I can on that line. And I've cut out my fabric. And what you don't want to do is what I did. Cut everything at least. If you're doing the strips, you're going to cut all the strips at two inches, maybe two and a half inches. If you are doing the four, one, two, one method like I'm doing, cut everything at at least two and a half, two inches. Just don't, I don't, I cut that at one. And I also, I don't know what kind of calculations I was doing, but I have a whole bunch of overage, a whole bunch of fabric that I cut up for no reason. So I'm annoyed with myself, but that's okay. I was still able to make it work. So like I told you guys, I'm doing the four, one, two, one method. 
there are eight slots one two three four five six seven eight I'm gonna cover four then I'm gonna cover one then we're gonna cover two and we're gonna cover one this is the way that I've done it I am going to take one of these strips which should be two inches it's not but it should be and I'm gonna put it right side up then I'm gonna take the strip that I want to cover the majority of the fabric which is this and I could have cut this a little bit larger too no need though I think five inches was good but if you need a little play you could do five and a half but this is five inches when I look at this I'm gonna decide which side I want to be sewn because the other side a lot of it's gonna be chopped off so I'm gonna actually pick this side to be sewn because I want a bigger part of the flower to be seen so I know that I am going to be sewing on this side. So I'm actually going to put the, this right sides together. And I'm using that 19 inch line right there just to kind of make sure that they're lined up pretty good. So that they're lined up pretty straight. And I'm going to make sure that they are sitting pretty much on that 19 inch line. So the small strip is, is underneath, and this bigger strip is going to be touching the fabric first. So this is foundation piece, so you work backwards. So the part that I'm going to be sewing is actually up toward me right now. And I'm placing this on that center line. I can see through the fabric, and I can see that that 19 inch is lined up all the way this way. This is how I'm going to start. I'm going to grab a couple of pins and I am going to pin the fabric in place. This is not fusible, so you will need to pin in order to keep everything as aligned as possible. Now everything is pinned. I put four pins in here and I pin them in a strange way. You can pin them this way. Whatever way you feel most comfortable, just make sure that you've got it so that this fabric isn't shifting around on you. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn my machine to one and a half. And we're going to sew down the center line here. You can see the line that is the center. It looks a little different than the other ones. The fabric placement line is off to the right by about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to drop this needle down right at the tip. There we go. Drop this foot down. And I'm going to sew at 1.5 down this center line. Now we have sewn down the line. I'm going to remove these pins and toss them over here on my pin cushion here. Because we've placed this and we've sewn, we've placed it about a quarter of an inch. I'm not going to worry about trying to trim this back to a quarter of an inch. We know that we pretty much have a quarter of an inch seam right here. Not a big deal. So I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just going to roll this back and I'm going to hit it with the iron. And I'm going to really give it some heat because I want this to press hard. So I'm rolling it back and I'm just going to let that heat sit on there for a while. And I am ironing the big pink part to the foundation piece also I'm smoothing that out because I'm actually going to base that section next 
and yes, I am letting this heat really sit on this and really flatten this out. So now it looks like this, it's pressed flat. I am going to flip this over and take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna do a basting stitch in this three quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna try to keep my foot, my quarter inch foot up against this side. You get what you get, you don't throw a fit, but I do wanna make sure that this is basted down. To do a basting stitch, I'm gonna turn my knob to the longest stitch length it has, which is 6.0. And I'm just gonna grab this. And I'm going to just gently be careful with it. And again, try to line that foot up with this. And it's just going to take really, really, really big stitches. So now I have this basting stitch around here, so that's not going to move. Now, for this next step, if I had made this the proper size, I would fold this back like two inches. So I pretty much got it at a quarter of an inch. I can see through the fabric here. Up here, it's way more than a quarter inch. So we can roll this back, fold this down here. So yeah, you fold this back on that line. So I'm going to put this on this second line. So remember, this is the stitching line. This next stitching line is right here. I'm going to put it back. I'm going to pull this back to expose what we have. I'm going to put this quarter inch little rim up against this. This is an add a quarter ruler. And I'm just going to take off. I could just take off that quarter inch. I guess I can. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. And that quarter inch is gone. Now we are going to flip it back over to the front. And we're going to line up the next color, which is the suits. And I'm just going to line the suits up with this edge here. And I'm going to start pinning down here at the bottom. So we're just going to make it straight and I'm going to pin to be sure that it doesn't move. You can pin a lot. You can pin a little. You do you. Um, there is a slight curve at the shoulder area, which is right here. So you might want to be careful going around that mountain. But other than that, you're fine. It's not such a hard curve that you're going to have a super duper, not yet anyway. So I'm just going to pin all the way up. And yes, for this one, I'm pinning this direction for whatever reason. This is just kind of what I'm doing. You do you. Make it make sense for you. Now I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to sew on this next line. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. If you're doing all strips, I suggest you alternate because you'll have a lot more tugging happening on this. So if you started up there, I suggest you start down here and go, you know, one way down, one way up. That's if you're doing all eight strips. And don't forget to start and stop with a little back stitch. I forgot, so I just went over it twice. But again, I'm going to sew on the next one that's right up against this one here so the next one okay so this is a close-up view so that you can see which one i'm sewing on because it does get a little tight up here and you're like which one is which make sure you set your machine back to a shortened stitch length i'm sewing on about a 1.5 somewhere around in there and we're going to sew on the line that's right next to this line that we've already sewn 
Don't get confused by the placing line. And we're going to backstitch right into the center of that circle. And now we're going to cut with some gas. And we're just going to sew all the way down this line. All right, so I have finished sewing on this line. And so you want to give it a peek and see if you've got a quarter of an inch you do. I do for the most part because you want to reduce bulk if yours has a lot more overhang. But we're fine. So now we are going to flip this over and we're going to push this back. And here it's going to be a little funky because there's a slight curve in there. But we're going to give it some encouragement with some heat and maybe even a little a little best press. I don't even use best press anymore. My magic quilting spray. It's the best spray in the world. So I am just pushing this back up against that seam. Pushing it back and I'm really holding this here and letting it cook. I want it to lay as flat as possible. And I am giving it some serious encouragement to lay where I say lay. So you're going to keep doing this. Push it back so that you're all the way up against that seam. And again, this is just like foundation piecing, except for you can really iron since the foundation is just fabric that's not fusible. So I'm going to go on ahead and finish ironing this, and then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of quilting spray and then freeze it in position, and then I'll show you. I'll come back. So now, if you flip it back over, you'll see that we want to cover two now. So we've got one. So we've got our four here. We've got our one strip that we just sewed on. Now we're going to cover two blocks, which means the next block that we're going to be sewing on is this guy way over yonder. Not the one that joins them together, but the one right next to it. So I'm just going to roll this back and see how much fabric overhang we have. And it's not that much down here but it's quite a bit up here at the top. You can trim that now, or you can just go on ahead and let it live. I'm gonna trim that right now, just so that I can place this fabric better. So I folded it back on that line. And yes, it's a weird angle, don't worry about that. And that's all the additional fabric. This one down here, I'm not going to so much worry about it. I'm going to flip it over to the front. And I'm going to line up the next piece. Now this next piece is the size that everything should have been cut at, including this one. I got lucky with the one and a half inch strip, but cut everything at two or two and a half. Now down here where it lines up, I am just going to pin, pin, pin. And I'm sewing over my pins. I shouldn't. You can pull these if you'd like, which is best practice. Okay, so this is where the shoulder is kind of happening. We're going to curve up here a little bit. And I'm just going to curve it just a smidge, not a whole bunch. This is not cut on the bias. These are straight, but they're going to give you, they're going to give you a little bit of, of a curve here. You're going to have a little curve. Just a touch. And then you just follow this down. You have so much up here that it just make it kind of lay comfortably if you can. Okay, now let's sew the next line. 
All right, so we've sewn this line here. We've sewn this line. We're going to skip this one, but we're going to sew the last, not the last one, the next to the last one. You want to skip this brown line. That's the one that you're going to use to connect. But I'm going to sew on this line right here, this one. Drop that needle down in there. And make sure that your stitch length is shortened still. And you can back stitch a bit. And we're going to come on off and we're going to veer to the right. If you're sewing over pins, which you should not be, so very slow. Now we are going to pull these pins. And we are going to cut off this excess here. Again, you ideally want about a quarter of an inch left. So I'm going to, and that's kind of where the curve starts happening up there. And we're gonna pull it down to where the curve happens and uncover that. And we will boop, boop. just try to leave about a quarter of an inch left with our add a quarter ruler. Now we're going to roll it over and now you are really going to want to give it a nice little press. It looks like there's a little bit of extra here. Did I not get it? And we're trying to reduce bulk, especially up here at the top. So we're just going to take off that extra. Okay. And there we have it. All right, so this is perfect here. And now we are going to give it some more encouragement with heat. And maybe a little steam, although I don't use steam in that way. I mean, I do, but not for mine. Okay, so just give it a, a go. And I'm just going to push back, and I'm just going to let it sit there and cook it. This is 100% cotton, and it can take a, a heat licking for sure and keep on ticking. So let it do its thing. And I'm pushing back against the seam. I'm letting it give it a little, you know, again, a little encouragement. And when I hit it like this, I'll come back over and spray some of my favorite quilting spray. And I will smooth it. I'm using my hand because I just put quite a bit on there. I smooth this out. Do not do this if you're doing a solid. If you're doing a solid, you need to use this. You spray a little bit. You let it dry. You come back over with maybe a little mist. You let it dry much faster. But um, I shouldn't say fast. You let it dry. Okay. But because this is colored and it'll hide any stains or if there are any stains to be had. And it was hot, so we're just going to smooth it out and come back over, and this will freeze it in place. It's very difficult to make this spray flake. It's doable, but if you do what I just did, it probably won't. And it probably will not burn. So I heated it up first. I came over it with the spray. I massaged it into the fabric, kind of told the fabric where I wanted it to go, and watch, when I pull this up, it's going to look like I'm pulling up a sheet of paper. And I'm heating it up and I'm drying it. 
this is hot hot and we're gonna let it cool if you have a clapper now is a great time to clap 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 I like this shape clapper for this particular project I have some square ones I have some small square ones big square ones rectangle ones I love a clapper and I love an all wood clapper for this And this is just going to smooth it and absorb some of that heat. And watch, when I pull this up, you're going to hear it. Did you guys hear it? It comes up like paper. It's super flat. And it's super stuck to that foundation piece. Now I just need to do the same thing for this back half. And then we will trim this piece out and be ready to put them all together. So now this is flat like a piece of paper and I'm going to baste this side the same way that I did this side just to keep it from flapping away from the foundation even though it's pretty much stuck and basted to the foundation because of all the spray that we used. But I'm just going to do the exact same thing with a quarter inch and a six inch length. My quarter inch foot and my six inch length. Now that we have all of our pieces pieced and pressed and all the things, I'm going to flip this bad boy over and we are going to cut it out again. So I'm just going to cut this on this line and remove all the excess fabric. And remember, this is an angle with the shoulder and everything, so you can't cut it straight, straight. You have to cut it and then cut around it a little bit and do the things. Now we are going to cut this tip off here. I swear I'm going to change that blade after this project. It needs to be changed now, but I swear after this project, we're going to change that blade out. And I'm going to tell you guys which blades those are, because if my mind serves me correctly, there's some Amazon inexpensive blades. And if this blade hasn't proven itself, I just don't know what a blade, what else a blade needs to do to prove itself to you. This blade has been working with me from the pillows and before, before the pillows, actually. And the pillows were paper pieced. And I was using paper to cut all the things. I was using this blade to cut paper, to cut everything, so we shall see. And now I'm cutting the bottom off. So this is our trimmed piece now. It has this basting line that you can see on the front. But don't worry, that will be captured back here when we, um, it'll be cut off. Because we're going to sew on this brown line right there in this brown line. So there's one. I'm going to do that to the other seven and then we'll start joining them together. So, I guess just to look at it, just to kind of see what it's going to look like, I'm going to lay them all out. So I'll have to worry about a blue touching a blue. There are eight pieces here, and it looks like it's going to come together, right? These four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now I just need to start sewing them side to side. So I'm going to sew two together, then another two, so on and so forth. I'm going to grab my pins and I'm going to stick this through the center of this. 
and then I'm going to find it over here and stick it through the center of this. And then I'm going to pin that. And I'm going to do the same thing for this pin here. And then I will pin through all of these, trying to make sure that sticking that pin through there, looking for this hole, sticking it through the center of that. I wish these holes were a little smaller. I don't know if they need to be this big. All right. And that looks like it lines up pretty good. So I'm going to pin through there and then I'm just going to be sure that these brown lines, I'm going to do the same thing for the brown lines. I'm going to pin a lot just to be sure that this lines up properly. There will be a lot of pinning. I'm pinning through the center one now and that looks good. And now I'm going to go through and do the same thing for this brown line and just make sure that they, they line up. My other one was pretty forgiving, but I'm assuming that the more accurate you are, the better your piece will be. So let's do it. Let's pin, pin, pin. So in all transparency, you know me, I'll always tell it. I'm close, but I am not dead on right here. I should have pinned some more in that little area. Um, do I, am I going to worry about it? I'm not. It's close enough for me. I think I'll be fine. So, uh, now they want you to press these seams open below the shoulder and above the shoulder here, they want you to cut it to three eighths, not a half, but three eighths. So I am going to, where's my half? There it is. We're going to go just a little less than three eighths right there. Not less, but we're going to go two three eighths. Here we go. I've got my ruler on the three eighth mark, and then we're just going to cut the rest of this away. And I'm using this little baby ruler here because it's a curve and I don't want to, well, I'm just using it because I feel like it, I guess. And I'm putting the third, the three eighths mark on the line that I've sewn. And this is not an exact science. You are just trying to reduce bulk here. That's all. And I'm just gonna cut that off at an angle. So it says cut these to 3 8 right here at the shoulder and then it says from the bottom you're going to press them open and I'm like okay that's a very big seam here but I guess pressing it open will reduce some bulk so I'm going to go take this to the iron and just press it open and this is what we have I'm just letting this fall where it's falling I don't know, I don't know, it just says press the seams open below the shoulder. I'm sure it wouldn't kill me if I tried to press the seams open all the way through the top, but that's not what the instructions say. And there's a lot of batting and foam that will be here, so hopefully it'll be okay. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. So I decided to call the woman at Tuffet Source. There was a phone number there and I was just wondering like, what do you do? And she says, you can go on ahead and press it open all the way through, up through the shoulder. It's just to relieve some of this bulk because it's going to be bulky. And what's going to get tricky is what happens up here. But we already know that from the pillows that we just did and the other Tuffet, we know that it's going to be a chunky, chunky, chunky uh, situation up here. So we're all right. 
we're okay with what's happening. So now that is my first one. And of course, it's going to bubble right here. And now we are going to add, actually, I guess we'll do another two and then do those two. Will we do another two and then those two or just add another one on there? How do I feel? I think I'm going to do another two and then add those two. That's kind of how I do my circle quilts and all that kind of stuff. So let's do this. Same thing. I'm going to put those pins through the points and pin, pin, pin. This feels much better, much closer than I was on the other one. I veered just a touch here and then a little bit here. But again, I'm not going to worry about it. And yes, I am going to. I'm not worried about this not lining up. Um, and we're going to cut this just like we did before to three eighths. And that will be that. <clears throat> and we're kind of curving around this weird shape. And we're just putting the three eighths on there. I'm just going to chop like that into it. And I'm going to try to press it open all the way up. Then I'll take these two pieces and put them together. And then we'll do the whole thing for the other four. <laughs> have sewn them all together we've got them all together and I've got all the seams pressed open I thought except for this guy right here this must have been the last one I've sewn and this last one I really just jumped off this part here but that's because I couldn't get it to line up here and so I'm thinking about ripping that to right here and trying to repin it and trying to catch it because it's so funky up here I think I will pull that really quickly. Um, other than that, everything looks pretty good. All right, that's better. So now we've got this all sewn together. And again, these tuffet patterns are pretty forgiving. Do not worry if you are not 100% on the line. I think it's still going to come out pretty good. Uh, my finger, there's a... A hole here that's big enough for my finger there's a lot of bulk that comes into the center here but there's a big enough button to cover the scary things that we don't want anybody to see so I think we will be we'll be fine I hope <laughs> we'll be we'll be okay all right so now I need to go find a cord I've flipped this right sides out now I need to go find a cord so that I can pull this like a drawstring at some point. I'll be right back. So in this kit, this is a Tuffet Source kit. It comes with a button and some cording and perfect. So I'm assuming it's going to be this cording that I'm going to use. I bought some of this cording from Joann's. It's super inexpensive. It's like blinds cord. Um, get it in the upholstery section. So this is the two and a half inch button. This is the cording that we're going to use to ruche the back. And then this is the cording that we're going to use to pull the button through. We're just going to put this to the side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ruler. And I'm just going to mark 
with any pin about a half inch up from the bottom just to kind of to give me a guide of course me always using such um, contrasting fabrics <laughs> You're going to be able to see it on some and not on others, but I'm just marking a half inch loosely because that is going to be the line that I use to for this cording. So for this part, it says to widen your stitch length as wide as it'll go and um, stitch on the right side of the fabric a half an inch above the the base so that's just what I'm gonna do that's my half inch line that I'm somewhat trying to follow I put my open toe foot on cuz it felt right I'm giving it a little bit of a tail and I'm just going to line this cording up with that center mark between my open toe foot you guys probably can't see it but I can see that it's right there and I'm going to lay this cording on top of it. I'm going to drop my presser foot. And this is going to be a super wide stitch. It says do not hit that uh, the cord. So as long as I stay in the middle here, I should be fine. And I'm just going to go all the way around doing this. Again, I left a, about a 5, 6 inch, maybe 7 inch tail on that side. Now we have our zigzag cording encased there. We have two strings here to pull it, to draw it tight. Now I'm going to go get the batting and the foam. I'm going to place this batting down. And then we are going to put the foam on top of it now if you buy the kit you've got some options for the kit to come with the batting already stapled on it which is awesome um, I didn't buy it that way because it's an extra cost that I don't need and I also am gonna use a much better staple gun that Stanley gun just was not as heavy-duty as I wanted it to be I ended up having to hammer in the staples quite a bit that other wood was extremely hard this wood feels a little softer that other kit is not even available any longer. This kit you can get. I can only find round kits. I can't find any square kits other than the Fairfield. Fairfield is not the most sturdy or luxurious kit, but it does come in the with foam. But the foam seems to have the same density as that Joann's foam, the green foam, which is really, and I have some here randomly, which I use in those cushions. It's different. The The holes here, the air holes, are a lot larger, and so the density is not the same. And that foam from Fairfield seems to be that same kind of quality. So, I'm just saying, I bought the Fairfield kit. I sent the Fairfield kit back. I might do the Fairfield kit again, but you're not going to get pre-drilled holes. You're going to have to work for it. It only comes with, I think, the foam and the wood and I think some directions. Outside of that, you're going to have to work for it. So we'll talk about the best way to do a tuffet and how much it's going to cost and all that. We'll, we'll have that conversation on another video. So let me go grab the batting and this foam. So this is the upholstery foam that I've laid down on my table. It is about an inch thick. It's not the same as that new foam. That new foam is a lot more dense and it doesn't move this way as easily as this does. This is a little bit lighter. I feel like I felt this kind of high loft batting all poly at Joann's. I feel like you can absolutely find this at an upholstery store for sure and at Joann's too. It feels, it's just a, it's, a, it's soft. The new foam was not this soft. So this is me loading my gun here. The battery is not in and I am just putting some, I think I'm using three eighth inch. You could use a half an inch and I'm just loading them down 
facing this way. And I have seen what this can do. So I'm not really, I'm not really concerned about the power of this. I think we'll be fine. I did a little two amp hour, 18 volt lithium battery for this. We are going to dream big and hope that one day I will be sponsored by Ryobi. <laughs> so now it is ready to go. Heavy duty. It's much more heavy duty, I should say. And it's heavier. So it's not, it's, it's a heavier one. Because this battery is not the largest battery, it's not going to sit up straight. I'm going to have to put it down on its side. But we will, um, we'll see how this, how this works out. I think it's going to work out much better, but I'll tell you. On my last video, I, didn't, I don't feel like I gave you a good enough look at the foam. The last video, the foam was similar. It is, it's probably the same foam. This is way more dense. This comes with the beveled edge, which is going to be a big difference between the ones that you get off of Amazon and the ones that you can purchase through a kit. This one comes with the center marked with a nice black, dark permanent marker. Um, it's totally smooth around the edges. They teach you how to cut this, but the chances of you getting it this smooth, slim to none. It'll be okay because of the batting, but still. On the back, you get a wooden circular board. There are T-nuts that are in here, which are going to help you with whichever feet that you've chosen to use. This wood, again, like I said, it feels a little softer. This one feels a little bit lighter than the other one. And then around three quarters of an inch thick, we have some nice large holes here for the button. You'll pull it on either side. The center is right in between here. You've got a lovely stamp on the back so that you know that you actually are getting a legitimate Tuffet Source one. You're not getting one of the ones off of Amazon that are a knockoff of Tuffet Source. These kits are very difficult to find. And so I only know of two places right now that are actually selling them. And that is the Tuffet Source and then I think it's Easy Quilting Corner, which are both out here. I don't know if anybody else is, but we'll look at that in another video. But I love how dense this foam is. This just feels a lot more luxurious. These T-nuts that are sunk in were done by machine. So, you know, it's just, it's nice. It's nice. This is a serious piece of furniture that you're making. It's not a, a fly-by-night <laughs> kind of piece of furniture. This is what the woman she called it an heirloom and i get it i get why she calls it an heirloom piece because really it is so i'm just going to start smoothing this batting up on the sides and i'm going to staple it about a half an inch from the edge so this staple gun you can adjust how strong how hard you want this sucker to fire I had it all the way up to max. That was absolutely not necessary. I can put it all the way down to minimum and it's still sunk all the way through this wood. Um, again, I feel like I'm going to go shoot the other one just to see if they're, if this wood, if it's the wood or the gun. I'm almost positive it's the gun. Wait till you guys hear the way that it sounds. You cannot sit it up with this light battery here. So I've done the opposite side over here. I've done this opposite side over here and now I'm just going to go across and I am not pulling it, I'm not, you know, distorting it or anything, but I am pulling it taut. Yeah, that one, okay. That one was a little bit. Mm. No, it's still pretty, pretty flush. No, it's in there. I could probably turn it just a touch, just a touch to make it a little bit stronger. And I'm going to smooth this out. Nice. And I'm just going to go north, south, east, and west. So I put three over here. Now I'm going to go to this side and pull it up. And then I'm going to just keep smoothing it up as we go. Yeah. 
that stapler makes such a big difference. I mean, I was sweating bullets the last time. I can hear my father come and cheer me on because he hears a power tool. You guys can't hear it, but I hear him. He's coming up here. I know he is. <laughs> Let me just say the right tools for the job every time. It just makes such a big difference. You know I'm a notions girl. We're going to be talking about this product here in just a second. Um, this, it just made it so fast and easy. So now I've got it all kind of gathered up here and I think I'm going to go back after I trim it and find out where they're like little, little places right here that are still kind of puffing up. But this just, it just made it so nice and easy and taut. And it took me no time, guys, to do this. I started at the north and south, and then we just, um, north, south, east, west, and then we just filled in the areas. It's kind of just like putting your hand in a ponytail. Now I'm going to cut this away, leaving about a half of an inch of batting. We're going to put some to the side for our button, which we'll get from this corner area. But you guys, when I tell you that Ryobi made the job easy peasy lemon squeezy, it did. It absolutely did. I probably shouldn't be cutting this batting with these scissors these are my everyday fabric scissors but such is life do i have 30 million other pair of scissors of course i do i'm a girl who likes notions and all the things but these are the ones that stay out all the time so And there we go. Look at the poof. The poof, the poof. Maybe there isn't any place that really needs to be. Let's see if I got it cute. It looks good. Look, it looks nice and round. And you know, I know it's weird putting a square on a round object, but I really didn't get any um, overlaps or anything like that that's going to make it bumpy or lumpy. It's It all kind of just works. All right, now I need to find the center, which I can see right there. And I'm going to put an awl through the center. Give me just a minute. You're probably wondering why I'm sticking an awl in here. But it's because I need to find center. And I can see it. It's dark. And I'm sticking it in there because I'm going to put the Tuffet cover over this. And I'm going to use that as my center mark. Now. I probably should have. We're going to go through this way. And we will stick it through that way. And we will find it again. There it is. Right there. All right. Now we have some place to hold it. And now I'm just going to pull my cover over and see if it fits. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to pull it over here to the corner of this table so that I can pull down past the tuffet a bit. It's tight. You got to want it. But because we shortened our stitch length and it's foam in here, We'll be fine. Wee! There we go. Oh, it's a cutie patootie. She's a cutie. Okay. And I'm going to keep on pulling until I get it even.
All right, guys, I'm going to do some zhuzhing here. Give me a minute, and I'll be right back with you. I've got to try to make sure I've got this centered as I want it. So I put the awl in this from the from back, and then we stabbed it, and then we just kind of worked it around. I feel like this is about as center as it's going to be for me. It feels good when I look at it dead on. I don't know what you're seeing from the camera angle, but it's pretty it's pretty centered. What I like about this is that you can order this kit with the batting already stapled down. And honestly, when we pull these drawstrings, you might not have to. Well, I think you're still going to have to staple it in some kind of form or fashion to to kind of finish it. But there is the option of doing like basically like a shower cap for these so that you can change them out seasonally. And I would actually suggest that I would suggest investing in one of these luxury bases, which would be from the Tuffet Source or Easy Quilting Corner. Um, they're just nicer with the beautiful feet, the beautiful heavy feet and that kind of thing. And then just switching out the tops as you use seasonally, as you want to. That is an option. Okay, so now it's time for us to evenly distribute this fabric around the sides. So I'm just going to start pulling on these cords here and we will see what happens. Nothing is happening. <laughs> I'm pulling on the cord. There we go. I once saw somebody do this with dental floss. And they said dental floss, it just doesn't catch. So it's, it's nice. So with my ruler, I'm just going to mark this. So that I can find it when we cover it up. There we go. Now I know where my feet are. Now I'm going to gather this again. And I'm not gathering this to truly tighten it because staples will tighten it. I just want to evenly disperse this fabric around. That's all this is for, is to just give you a, a kind of a pretty gathering so it's not all bunched up in one place. So after I get that nice and kind of cool, I'm going to go in ahead and just tie a square knot. Okay, so I tied just a regular knot here, and that's good enough. I think that's fine. I will probably staple it down in here somewhere. So now we need to do the bottom, find the bottom, the bottom cover for it. Because I should have done this step prior to covering that. But the instructions say take an 18 inch square and trace the tuffet bottom on there so that you get a circle. Now I know that I don't need a circle that's that big. And this square I just happen to have sitting around from covering the other one. So I'm just gonna use what I have. And I have some kind of curve here, probably from another project where I used a circle. And I'm just making sure the curve hits here and here. And I'm gonna take a rotary cutter and I'm just gonna follow that curve. And we'll see how big of a circle I get and if it's big enough. For me not to have to cut an 18 inch square. So this square was 16 inches when it started and I folded it in a quarter in quarters they say quarters yes. And now I have a circle that is about almost 16 when I press it it might be close to 16 inches and I think that's going to be big enough to cover the bottom cleanly yep it will so the next thing I'm going to do is press it and then I'm going to turn this over about a half an inch all the way around so I made the bottom cover for 
this thing here and it looks good it'll cover everything nicely when it is time all right let's move on to the button so I remember that there was a tuffet button pattern perfect so I went ahead and just cut a piece of fabric now I'm going to take that same pattern and I'm going to cut a piece of batting too. This is just leftover batting that we have from the tuffet. And I am going to cut it around loosely. Not really taking care to do this in a very special kind of fussy way. We're just making a circle. That's good enough. Then we're going to take it and we're going to split it in half. All right. We'll take that side, which is the thinner side. <clears throat> Also, we're gonna actually, I better press this and then I will cut this out. Next, it says to use some upholstery thread. I have no, I, I do not have upholstery thread, but I do have some pearl cotton, which I'm gonna use and I think I'll be fine. So I'm just gonna take my pearl cotton and this doll needle that is extremely sturdy. I'm just gonna tie a quick knot at the back and then we're gonna do a running stitch through the batting and the fabric. That's where I messed up last time. I didn't do it through the batting and the fabric. I just did it through the fabric. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take the batting here and a running stitch, which means I'm going to go in and come out. And I'm just going to go back in and come back out. And I'm going to do that all the way around until it gathers. It should look like a little shower cap when I'm finished. That was super duper fast. Now I'm just going to take this two and a half inch button now on here, this button, they actually have the clasp on the back. The other one that I had did not. And then I'm just going to pull it tight. And just keep cinching it. Ouch. And look how pretty it looks. Now I'm going to try to get my button smooth. So I'm going to cinch it a little bit. And then I'm going to just start stitching back and forth back and forth so it's coming out from over here i'm gonna find where it's got a got a pucker and i'm gonna put it through there and i'm gonna pull it and that's just gonna make it smooth so then i'm gonna go back across where it's got this little edge right here and i'm gonna stick my needle through there and i'm just gonna pull it tight and see it smooths it right out and i'm gonna just keep doing that until my heart is happy <laughs> So in this kit, they give you four strings that are kind of shorter. And you really want to work these strings so that they are in there very, very, very tight. I was doing it differently, but I, the strings just weren't long enough. So I'm going to thread it through the needle. I'm going to go across from this one. So I'm going to work over in this area here. I want it to come out a little bit right there. No, right there. I wanted to come out about a quarter of an inch in. All right, so I'm going to pull that through. And I'm going to take another stitch here. Right near it. There we go. And I'm going to pull that through again. So now I can kind of pull it and adjust it. I want a shorter tail right there. I'm going to thread this puppy one more time and I'm going to send this needle right back up kind of where it is. There we go.
Okay, now it feels tight. And now I'm just going to tie a knot a couple of times and then take another stitch and that should be secure. So I'm tying a knot with the little piece that I left. Come on, little knot. There we go. This is a little bit fussy, but this is how they want you to do it. So now I have a nice knot right there that's tight. I'm going to thread this needle one more time and just take it through and be sure that this knot is not coming out. And now I'm going to tug on it really hard and I can see that it's not, it's not going anywhere. So then I'm going to do the same thing for the first two. And then yes, when we finish, it'll look like a little jellyfish. <laughs> All right. So the way that we do this is I stick this 12 inch needle backward through the hole and I'm trying to get it to come through the center. So I've pushed it through oh shoot there it is right there and it comes right through and I'm still got my hand on it on the front side right here the needle is still there I'm gonna stick two of the the jellyfish from the button all the the cords are here I'm gonna stick two through that hole and pull it through to the other side Right, so now I can see kind of where I want this guy to go and fussy with it a little bit and pull on it and all that great stuff. If you want your tuffet to sit down, if you want that look where it's pushed in, like I'm doing now, I'm pushing it, pushing it. To get it to do it by yourself is difficult. I might even, I haven't figured out how to do it by myself just yet. I'm pulling it, I'm pushing on it right now and I'm kind of giving it an idea. But if you really want that button, if you really want it tufted, um, I'm going to show you how. I'm just going to put a clip on that real quick. Not that they're going to fall through, but who wants to do that again? It wasn't difficult, but no thank you. At Home Depot in the plumbing section, you can get this. This is, I want to say, a three... I think it's three inches on one side and is it three it's three inches on one side it's three and a half inches on one side and then I think four on the other take this and you're going to cup your button you're gonna put your button you can put your button on this side or you can do it on this side and you are going to flip this over so that the button is sitting in the hole you're gonna have somebody press on this. And I had my mother press twice. You see how it went down two times? And then I tied a, a knot while she was pressing down on this because trying to do it with one hand, I'm sure it's doable. Um, if I were doing this just by myself, I think I would push, pull it, push, pull it, and then hit it with some staples. So, I tried to staple this by myself and it was a fail. I just could not, I could not get it. I think it's because I didn't want it, you know, you know, I really didn't want it, but it could have worked. However, I had help here and I love this. I think this is absolutely beautiful. I think it tufted gorgeous. Um, it's deep. It doesn't have to be this deep. This is quite deep, but we were leaning on it quite hard. Not super duper duper hard, but hard. So now I need to find where these feet are and mark them. And so I'm just making sure that there is, okay, so that's right there. I'm using my awl to do this. Perfect. And I'm making sure to put a staple right here also so that it's, the fabric is not going to shift when I put the cover on. Now I'm going to grab my back. And I am going to try to center this so that nobody can see all of my ugly. And it feels pretty centered. 
feels pretty good. And now I'm going to stick a, a staple this way. And I am going to find where that hole is. I'm going to pull it back and find where that hole is. I can see this hole is right here. Now I'm going to go across this way and find this hole. I'm gonna give it just a little, I'm just gonna pull it taut. Nothing too crazy, just taut. Okay. I will staple more at some point I guess I could do it now and just put you guys on pause and then show you me digging out this hole some more now did I get this circle perfect no there's way more over here than it is over there but we're gonna pretend like we can't see that because again it's the bottom and we will not fuss with this okay it's not perfect but it's it's on there it's covered no none of my Undies are showing, so I feel good about this. I am sticking this all into the hole where the pin is, and I'm pulling it out, and I'm just going in a circular motion here, trying to make a good size hole for the foot. I'm going to give it a little cut, a little snip snip. Yep, it took just that long. I've been screwing for a while. <laughs> but I think I finally got it down in there good. All right, perfect. And now she's tight. Okay. So we are down to our last little foot. And I just want to show you guys how beautifully wrapped up these are. So the, the guard is on the outside of the plastic. And it actually has a... A tip on it and then you open this up and there you are and that's how it comes which is just lovely I love when stuff is packaged beautifully well I think it came out pretty stinking cute it's big it's heavy it is quite luxurious I must say um, it's definitely a couture piece of furniture. I think it's gorgeous. Um, you guys are going to have to let me know what you guys think because I'm absolutely biased. But the things that I'm concerned about is doing it again because it's a lot of fun, but it's super expensive. And so I want to look at some ways to cut the cost. There is a kit on Amazon and I sent mine back, but I think I'm going to buy it again and look at it. I'm still going to use the patterns from either Tuffet Source or, um, what's the name of the other company that I used, or um, Quilter's Cocoon, but this is just gorgeous, guys. I am really sure. Let me know what you think.